Joining us now is Jason Nichols. He's a senior lecturer in the African American Studies Department at the University of Maryland. Um, do we have Jason? Yes, yes, Roy, I'm here. Okay, I can't see you yet, but Jason, if you could tell us uh, uh, what you make of the timing of all of this. Well, I think it's good timing. I think it's uh, long overdue, and I think it's very important. Uh, I also think that we can't be distracted by these symbolic gestures when we have so many real-world substantive issues that need to be addressed by this administration and this Congress uh, that will be much more important to the lives of many African Americans. We need meaningful police reform. We need uh, education protection. We need uh, environmental protection. There's so many things, so many needs, and of course, voting uh, is under attack. So these are things that I think African Americans are very concerned about, and I think if Joe Biden wants to solidify his legacy, these are the things that he needs to attack. You mentioned earlier the King holiday, People don't remember that Reagan was involved in passing the King holiday, but they do remember Johnson in passing the Voting Rights Act and the Civil Rights Act. So for his legacy, for this Congress, these are the things that they need to address. And you notice that there's far more opposition for those substantive issues than there is for the symbolic ones. But I do think that this is important, and I think that this timing is good. It's long overdue, and we should celebrate it. Uh, it's interesting you call it a symbolic gesture. I, I heard uh, Congresswoman Maxine Waters just a short time ago uh, quite ecstatic that this has been passed and saying that the, symbolize is actually qu the, the symbolism is quite important, that it gives uh, some momentum for going forward. Would, would you agree? Oh, yes. Uh, uh, you know, I, I agree with Maxine Waters in that it is important, and symbolism is, is never unimportant. Uh, I think that symbolism is incredibly important. Uh, but it doesn't affect directly anyone's life other than getting a day off of work. And I think mm. that that's just the, the reality of it. It doesn't get people voting rights. It doesn't protect people's uh, environmental protections. It doesn't do any of those substantive things. And those are the things that are actually gonna better people's lives. We've, as you stated in your opening, we've been celebrating uh, uh, Juneteenth and Emancipation Day in September for generations. My family celebrates Emancipation Day on uh, September 22nd. We've been celebrating that for generations. But that didn't necessarily help us in terms of gaining wealth and the wealth disparities and the wage disparities and all the things that really affect our lives. And so we can't lose sight of that and just celebrate uh, a symbolic gesture. We know we heard there that uh, in 1865, General Granger arrived informing the slaves there in Galveston that they had been freed. Uh, uh, some historians saying that many of them had actually uh, already known that, some didn't. But it's also important that he was there with a gun telling that to the slave masters, correct? Absolutely. Uh, of course, we know Texas was a very remote state at the time. Uh, the Emancipation Proclamation was signed uh, and, and ratified into law on January, excuse me, yes, January 1st, uh, 1863. But for more remote states that didn't have a big Union presence, you know, it happened a lot later, you know, when the Union soldiers actually got there. And it was important that they go and enforce the law. Uh, and, you know, of course, by the way, it, it's, uh, you know, I would be remiss if I didn't also state that uh, the Emancipation Proclamation freed enslaved Africans in Confederate territory, not in Union territory. There were states that did not uh, that did not secede, like my own state of Maryland, Delaware, uh, and two other states did not secede, and they were not freed by the Emancipation Proclamation. So this action was really important, and it was important for them to actually come and enforce the law. And sometimes that that in uh, includes force with guns. All right, Jason Nichols from the University of Maryland, thank you for joining us.